could have totally had a conversation with you after Georgia Tech about making more of a concerted effort to get him touches. He had to get more open, and the guys out on the perimeter had, had to be more uh, concerted to get him the ball. What was that conversation like? And obviously, that was a point of emphasis that it worked today. No, we did. I mean, we had a really nice time together just, um, you know, talking about him and and what is needed for him personally and for our team to be the best that he can be. Um, I know people have told me that he's has said um, that, you know, he it, taking a reserve role or, you know, this is this person's team and my, my role has changed. And I told him, I, I, I've never told you that. For us to be the best team that we can be, we need you being a dude. And so we need RJ scoring 20. We need you getting 20 and 20 rebounds. And I said, look, I've never been a person that points fingers and never self-evaluates and looks at myself. And I said, look, I think one, being more aggressive and working harder to get the ball and then me tweaking in uh, some of our plays to be able to get you the ball a little bit easier in spots where you can be effective. And I just, Armando was terrific, not just scoring, um, but uh, two things, uh, his ability to play defense without fouling. Filipowski is one of the better players in the country. Not only can he score, he draws fouls. And, you know, we were concerned about that going into the game. And um, an area where Armando has improved so much is handling the double team. There was a point of his career where that, that really, that flustered him. And now I felt like he was confident in those situations to be able to get the ball out, not turning the ball over and, I'm um, just really happy for him. If I Coach, when, you were, that, when you were recruiting Harrison Ingram, did you think he could be this type of player? I thought he could be really good. That's you know I you know Harrison, um, you know his game with that size and that versatility to be able to play multiple positions helps us defensively in rebounding. It helps us on the offensive end, being able to post him up, shoot from three. He can bring up the ball in transition. Um, and his personality, as I said to you guys before, just brightens the room as soon as he comes into it. So, like, he's just um, – our guys just love and enjoy being around him. And so I'm just so glad he's at Carolina. Hang on one second. Andrew, have a follow-up. Follow-up to you, Armando. How important was it that he got going early and the stuff that you guys have talked about worked and sort of everything else sort of fell into place around it? Well, I thought it was important for him to get off to a good start. You know, and um, he was able to do that. And I, I felt like that gave him confidence to be able to be a force and effective uh, on the offensive end. When he's dominant down low in the post like that, that just opens everything up for us. It, it gives us space to drive and to penetrate and get to the basket. It gets us open shots on the perimeter. It gets us closer to the penalty where I think we went 18 for 25. We shot 25 free throws. And so... There's a number of benefits for us when Armando is aggressive and plays the way that he does, that he did tonight. Hubert, I know Seth has had higher scoring games, but... He was terrific. He, yeah, I mean, he had um, the, the buckets in transition in the first half, and then to come in when Elliott got those two quick fouls in the second half, I mean, what can you say about the performance that he had? Well, that's all on Seth. You know, one of the things that um, he has talked about is, you know, he was, he was getting to the basket and um, struggling finishing. And this is who Seth is. I mean, he's been before and after practice working on finishing, uh, being stronger and um, using his athleticism, being able to finish around the basket. And those those moves were definitive. They were confident. Um, and with his athleticism and his ability to attack the basket, that just gives us another dimension on the offensive end, um, especially off of closeouts, cuts from the corner, the wings, and um, – that play where he threw the ball into the post and then cut to the basket and was able to score in combination with the way that he can play defense. Um, he was really huge for us today. You were following up on that question about Harrison, but how emblematic, he, he must have done for five or six loose balls, was hustling. Yeah. How emblematic of that is this whole team's desire just to keep winning regardless of who's kind of doing it? I do. I, there's a hunger and thirst with this group that um, – individually and as a team to be the best that it can be. You know, I, I just, and it comes from many different directions. Obviously the people, the guys that have been here before, there's a hunger and thirst to um, to continue to grow and, and, and be good. And then you have, you know, guys like Cormac and, and Pax and Harrison 
who've never run out of that tunnel and looked at that type of crowd and been on this stage. And so um, a thankfulness and an appreciation for being here. And so there's a hunger and thirst to be good because this is the first time in their career they've been in this situation. And then the freshmen, I don't know if they know what's going on, but there's a <laughs> hunger and thirst for them to be a part of this. And so it's nice to, to see the, you know, um, the motivation in this team to be the best that it can be, whatever it ends up. But I, um, all year this team has been connected and had a goal um, to reach their full potential. Coach, you talked about Phil Kowalski and earlier in the week some of the challenges he poses. Can you just talk about how you played defended him tonight? Yeah, I mean, you just got to do the best that you can. I mean, where they get him the ball, he's just – Obviously, he's good around the basket, but even in you know the high post or a little bit off the lane, his ability to face up and use pivots, you know, he's got terrific you know footwork and uh, his ability to be able to score, uh, foul, uh, draw fouls, get to the free throw line, and also he puts a lot of pressure on you because he can he can shoot it from three, and so that was a huge emphasis for us. And one of the things that we always, I mean, even as a player. For me, it's you know, you know, defensively, yes, he he's he's a handful, but you got to go at him on on the defensive end. And I thought Armando did that. I thought Armando made him play defense, and that's something I think really helped us uh, tonight. What did you say about the team that every time Duke tried to creep in and get close, you guys always had to counter punch? Well, I mean, it doesn't happen all the time, but I mean this this team, I think. One of the characteristics of this team has has been able to, you know, handle a little bit of adversity and bounce back. You know, one of the things that we always talk about is, you know, whether good things or bad things happen, the only thing you have control over is how you react and how you respond. And um, I feel like all year our guys have done a really good job reacting and responding, whether something's going well for us or something, you know, we're struggling with it. And just the conversations in the huddle, the conversations on the floor with these guys, they're locked in, they're communicating, they're talking, they're all on the same page. Um, gives you great confidence as a coach that they can do the things they need to do to continue to win out there on the floor. You guys yeah. tell them to... Well, Adam, thank you. Hubert, along those lines, uh, what did you see from your group in terms of the realization that they were sort of face guarding RJ a lot and trying to take him out of most everything? And just the way that they handled that, the way they navigated the fact that this dude who's been scoring a ton, you know, might not be getting as many points as he normally does. How did you how did you see your guys sort of handle that? I thought they did a really good really good job of that. You know, when you I don't have a stat sheet, but you know, you look at the scoring, it, it's it's really diverse. I mean, so you know, when they're paying that much of attention to RJ, I mean, somebody's open and somebody needs to step up. Harrison hit five threes for us. That was huge. Armando was really aggressive. You already mentioned Seth and his ability to attack the basket. I thought Elliott was really good. His ability to get to the basket, make passes, push and transition. I felt like our best offense was when we were transitioning from defense to offense. And really, I, this team just doesn't care. Like at the end of the day, if RJ had zero and Armando had 90 points or vice versa, I don't really think they care. I, I, I really think this group like celebrates the success of their teammates. Like they celebrated more than their success. And so I don't think it would they would care. And I don't you know, and you look at the stat sheet and RJ had 17 points, you know, and so it's um it's a really good team effort. Hubert, to follow that up though. Is there some type of blueprint that you can take off of Ingram and Baycott having double doubles the way that they did and dominating, you know, down low or whatever, and kind of? I'd like that every game. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I I would. I mean, that would. I'd be okay with that. And um, but it but it is it it um, it takes us to a different level, you know, because you know them offensively and and then the year that RJ is having. Um, that makes it very difficult from an offensive standpoint for teams to stop us. And, um, you know, those threes by Harrison were huge for us. Take, Hubert, a, couple, take, take about, a couple more, please. Hubert, how'd you feel about the pace y'all played with it? Did I did. I, oh, no, it was good. It yeah. was good. You know, in the first half, I, I'll give you an example. They made a basket, and boom, we got a layup. I mean, that, and I told the guys, I said, that's the pace I want. I said, I think we can go faster. Uh, and 
that that's that was the perfect example of that's the way we want to play. I mean, whether it's a made basket, miss, turnover, out of timeout, free throw, let's go. And um, I felt like the way that we transitioned from defense to offense has been a strength of us all year. That's why defending and rebound is so huge for us. If we defend and rebound, that means we get to have some fun and we get to go and transition. And so I think the guys are every day starting to understand that and starting to buy into defending and rebounding because then they get to run and, and get to score. But I thought our pace was good. Here we go. going, back to, going back to Armando real quick, it sounds like that meeting was your idea. And how much could we tell maybe that things have been weighing on him for a bit? I don't know if things have been weighing. I, I mean – this is not out of character. I, I told you guys that, I, I first of all, I require the guys to stop by the office at least one time a week, and I tell them we can't talk about basketball. we got to talk about school, whatever they're watching on Netflix, what's their favorite thing they like to eat. Um, but this, I mean, but I, I call the guys into the office all the time. I talked to Armando. I, had, I, I met with Elliot. I met with RJ. I met with Harrison. I mean, these are things that I do every week. Um, that I just text guys and say, hey, stop by the office. Let's catch up and let's talk. And um, I did. I wanted to talk to Armando this time, not just about life, but about basketball. And, um, you know, it's, it's really important for me for Armando to finish out his career the right way. And I just wanted to, to hear how he was feeling. And I, I heard those comments from him saying taking a backseat role. And I wanted to ask him, is that what you said? And I wanted to tell him, I never said that to you. That's not what we want, and that's not what we need. And it was just a really good conversation. In the tunnel, you gave him a hug when you saw he was I did. Him. I what, did. What did you tell him in that moment? I told him I loved him, and I'm so proud of him. And I gave him a kiss on the cheek or on the neck. I couldn't get up to his cheek. <laughs> <laughs> he was but, uh, Last, I'm sorry. No, it was good. No, it was. I'm just really, really proud of him. Last one, Jeremiah. Yeah, Hubert, um, you did mention, obviously, the you know game that Harrison Ingram had and things like that. What did you notice that was maybe, I don't know, different kind of about the flow he was in, just in those points he's had, you know, quite a while. Just was there anything before the game or even during the game that you noticed that was different about the kind of flow he was in? No, I mean, I, you know, I don't it, – it doesn't dictate whether he's hitting shots or not. He's always bringing energy and effort, enthusiasm, um, a, a toughness about it. You know, you mentioned he was on the floor diving on loose balls. Like, I mean, he's just – Every time he makes a shot or three, start clapping, you know, and uh, he was getting in the middle of things in the second half there, so you got to calm him down a little bit. And he, he likes to talk, and, and but uh, um, he does so much for us on and off the court and in the locker room, and it's uh, stuff that you guys don't see and you don't look at on the stat sheet. And um, you never know how new guys will respond to being on this type of stage because it is a first, and, you know, himself and others, I thought they responded really well. Thank you, Coach. Thank you.